Hello, everybody. Uh, here, get scoot over. <laughs> <laughs> I was framed up earlier, I swear. <laughs> it's true. Hey, everybody. Hello. Uh, this is the Leader Games. Studio cast. Studio design chat. Studio cast. Uh, we're here for June. We're trying to do the first Tuesdays of the month, but like, don't block out your first Tuesdays of the month because, you know, things come up. Has it been like 15 months since we've... We didn't do them. We didn't do them before COVID. We didn't do so them before. So it's never been. Yeah, we. This is the first one. I was wondering. I was like, I when I was setting it up, mm -hmm. I was. I thought like, well, how did we used to do it? And mm -hmm. I was like, I don't know if we've ever. No, yeah, because we start, We started all the streams as a as a. Scoot over more. Power. As a way to like. Um, as a way to get started with, uh, or way to deal with co cope with COVID. Again, we did all those games last summer. Mm -hmm. I wasted a bunch of studio time. Tons. It takes so much time, especially if you're pulling in lots of people. Uh, it just takes a lot of time to do it. And yeah, but I think we're gonna keep doing it. at least this. You know. We're yeah, yeah. No, this is fine. Yeah, I don't mind. I don't. I, I like talking. To this you. is my only like time I get to know what Cole's working on too. So it's it's helpful. <laughs> what have I been up to? Yeah, we've all been learning. So yeah. Uh, yeah, so let's give a quick studio update. What are we working on studio? First, we're vaccinated. We're mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. This is like the first, is it, was last week the first week? Last week was kind of the first week mm -hmm. where everyone was back in studio mm -hmm. since it began. Uh, it is kind of wild. This, so some of the team has been here for a few months now, several months, uh, but a pretty small portion yeah, of the team. Yeah, you didn't really stop. We had like a four month break. And then once the positivity rate went beneath like 10% mm -hmm. or so, we brought back the creative team to finish, some of the creative team to finish Oath. Uh, but, you know, we've been here, but it's been empty. It's been empty. So this is like, we have, you know, when we eat lunch, there are two tables now. Mm -hmm. um, I'm still getting used to what it's like to have people walk into my office unannounced. It's mostly nice. It's me. Yeah, well, it's not, it's not, it's not it's even mostly you. <laughs> <laughs> it's Marshall. It's me. No, I love I love it when folks knock on my door, or when yeah. they don't. Um, but yeah, everything everything's everything's good. We are we are, we're back at it. Um, I, we just testament to how busy the studio is getting. Today, I pulled out one of our extra tables from the storage room so I could set up set up some stuff on it. And work when you said you're moving a table, I thought you're moving one of the ones that was there, and I was like. No, no, but no, no yeah, I'm, not, I'm not that sneaky. Yeah, either. yeah. So we have a table that was sitting back in our storage room, and oh, thank you. That was a lovely interview. Uh, we had a table back in our storage room, and he carried it out to the main area. So we have four tables mm -hmm. uh, out there right now that are set up in some form of, I, I guess, one's waiting for me because there's a blank. Yeah, the empty ones by, or it's just there for lunch. I think it's there for lunch. Yeah. But also, like, we have, we actually have a table here we can yeah, use. Yeah, totally. We might have to get another one. I don't know. We have nope. to, it's funny, I, I don't know if I've ever told this story on stream, when my, my grandfather was like one of those like early computer nerds, mm -hmm. and I remember him teaching me how computers worked when I was a kid, he'd say like, well, like the speed of your librarian is the processor, and your, your, your hard drive, those are the bookshelves, uh -huh. and your RAM are the number of tables. It's like, how many books can you have open at oh, sure, yeah. time? Yeah. And so when, we first start, when I first started working here, I would always think like, how much RAM does this company really have? <laughs> <laughs> it just never, it just never went away. Um, the shirt that Patrick is sporting is one of our playtester shirts. Yeah. So be a playtester. I'm listed in the Oath playtesting. It, it's true. I, I, I you played it, a lot yeah. of Oath. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that's how you get those. Um, yeah, so what are we doing in studio? Well, today I've been working on the bots. Um, so the bots for Root Marauder are out of, out of development. They're, you know, the, the, the designers turn them over and we're taking them through the first editorial pass. And while that's happening, people like myself who have not really played any of the new bots uh, are giving them a go and just seeing how it works. And I'm like, in some respects, I'm a very, as Patrick told me today, I'm kind of a bad audience just because I don't play a lot of the games solo. Mm -hmm. But it also makes me very useful for this stage of the process because I'm going to stumble a little harder than players who really know and do a lot of work on Root Clockwork. So I'm playing through them. Uh, I'm playing a game against the otters and the lizards, and they are walloping me. It's it's embarrassing. So I think I'm, I'm going to try again this afternoon or tomorrow. There were See, tears. Yeah, I just I, I walked into Nick's office and was like, I just can't do it. I can't beat these dang robotic rivet folk. Um, but they are uh, they are going really well. Uh, we are a lot of the studio bandwidth right now is taken up by finishing Marauder. Mm -hmm. uh, 
I guess half or two thirds of the studio is doing it in one way or another. Yeah, yeah. Kyle has recently finished the Marauder art. I think it's totally done now. Um, Josh, is, we've like finished a lot of the first drafts of the, or not first drafts, a lot of the final drafts of the rule books. So they're like now going to usability test testing. Patty is uh, pulling them out into pre-press and getting mm -hmm. ready for the factory. And it, I mean, we have probably like a month left, maybe even a little bit more than that. Uh, that's not true. We have like a month left. Um, it just takes a long time to finish a project like this. It's so big. I'm scared. Yeah. It's, and the Marauder is such a good value because you're getting, um, you're really getting four. Like it's like it's like four people's like full time effort. Like yeah. In the in the design sphere, uh, you know, and, and let alone Patty and 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 Kyle uh, working on the graphics and then you know the operations supporting the actual production. Uh, but you're you know like essentially at this point the rats were designed by me. Uh, jo I think we talked about this last stream. Josh designed the badgers, and you're mm -hmm. working on the uh, you did all the hirelings, and then uh, and then. And then Nick did Nick. a ton of work. Yeah, too. Yep. yeah, and then and an ad set, and then and, and landmarks. That's like fine yeah. things. Yeah, so it is. It's one of those things that like I think you know it's fun that we're watching people get oath right now because a lot of folks are rightly shocked by how much stuff is in that box. Mm -hmm. Folks who get the Marauder content, you know, whenever it ships, are going to have similar feelings of shock and awe because there's just so much design content. Like I don't. I mean. It's just every everything that got added to the game just fully multiplies all the various combinations. I think it's going to hit people like a, like a ton of bricks. You could play with one part of it, I think. I think you'd just be like, I'm just going to play the Wolves. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just going to play the Badgers, and then I'm going to add in the rest of it, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't think it's going to be overwhelming. And we tried, you know, one of the things as a team that we had as a goal was that the, the new root content should feel like it comes with a door, like a very clear way to be like, hey, I'd like to explore this new root stuff. Sure. And so then you can enter into all the all the various content. Uh, Kyle, don't worry, I won't tell anyone that you have a couple icons left. You just announced it to the public. Uh, the game is so big. Yes. All right. Uh, well, I always ask you at the top of the at the top of the now ten minutes in, mm -hmm. uh, what games you've been playing lately, Cole? I just got a copy. What have I been playing? So I I got. I went to a game store, a real, a real live in person. You mean Amazon? Store. No, oh. oh, I went to one of those stores that has a door and you have to walk in. Ooh, neat. And I got a copy of Survive mm -hmm. for my son. Oh yeah, yeah, the, the old, the old the boats game. And the, the boats. Yep, yep, yep. We've already played a bunch. Loves it. Love it. It's great. And then for myself and my wife and maybe our neighbors, because we found out our neighbors are board gamers. Uh, I got a game, Awkward Guests, which I'm really excited about, which is a weird, goofy deduction game. That's fun to play with. Um... That's new people. And you can, you're, you're now my awkward guest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Kind of, so I, I, I'm, I'm just kind of, I was searching for a good deduction game. I think this one might be the thing. What about you, Patrick? What are you playing? Uh, so I, um, The Heart of the Wild, I think that's what it's called. I'm so pumped for this game since uh, you told me about it. Yeah, uh, I just started playing on the on the computer. I just, you know, and I, I buy like way more games I could possibly play on Steam and I play them for an hour and go, eh. And then I don't return them because I didn't know about it. Just isn't a habit I have. Uh, but yeah, I picked up this game. It's an indie game. It's got beautiful, beautiful graphics. Go look it up now. Uh, it's two D, but mm -hmm. it's like two D Pikmin. It, yeah. I mean, it's essentially the same gameplay as Pikmin. It's just there's there, the story. The story has more of an emotional core to it. And uh, I'm like, it's none of it's been hard. I actually, did get stuck on a puzzle like for like ten minutes last night. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I I'm just enjoying the like the process of like. Got to get the little guys. You got to throw them at the thing. Things happen. Uh, if anyone can verify the title for me, it's that's... called um, "The Wild at Heart." The Wild at Heart. I know yeah. that I just looked it up. Yesterday. Yeah, yeah, the Wild at Heart. I keep messing it up. Uh, so I'm liking that one. I've been playing um, the Initiative with my wife, um, which has been uh, fun. Uh, I am still doing prep work for War Cry. I'm almost there. I'm almost there to play, <laughs> yeah, to almost, play, to play almost, a miniature war game. T minus two weeks to launch. Uh, and uh, and I, I played some Dominion a couple weeks ago. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. I uh, I read some of the press copy for The Wild at Heart and it described it because it's kind of like a, you know, it's like a picking clone a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, it is. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. But they described it as a, um, a herd-like which I thought was cute. Uh, That's a cute thing. Ooh, heard. That's a four-letter uh, yeah. word. Uh, oh, heard, 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 maybe we uh, get in contact with that team. Um, someone asked for an oath strategy tip. I'm going to give an oath strategy tip. I'm ready. Um, the game seems more tactical than it is. 
Like you can oh, go, I'd agree. You can go through Oath thinking that like you're always having to react. Don't play Oath reactively. Like formulate a plan and execute. Uh, it will change how you think about the game. And then Josh Yearsley will take it apart the last turn. Yes. <laughs> that was my last game before it went to print. I was I like had it all locked up, and then Josh like, <laughs> Josh produces this card, and I was like, ah, oh, good. Fantastic. Uh, there's another comment referencing the Shut Up and Sit Down uh, podcast on Oath, and they were curious about our thoughts. I don't mind talking a little bit about it. I really like their, their uh, podcast. It seems like they... Oh, it's um, the podcast. Yeah, it's the podcast. You guys were talking about it yesterday. I was like, I don't see a video. No, no it's the podcast. Yeah, go, go look at the podcast. It's really okay. fun. Um, I thought it was a very good read. Very honestly, kind of a flattering read for Oath. They seem like I'm glad they got so much enjoyment out of it. Um, they made a comment about which is the comments being alluded to by this user uh, that the game sometimes felt like a little random from the draws. Mm -hmm. There, there are two things there. One thing is that. If you go into the deck searching for a card, you're gonna get disappointed. Instead, you should think about the search action as offering you three opportunities, and you could take one of those three opportunities. But if you don't wanna take any of those three opportunities, you're gonna just keep searching and burn through actions and the game's gonna pass you by. The other thing is they talked a little bit about how the card, the, some of the cards are very, very powerful. Well, that's only half the story because all the cards are very, very powerful. And this is a little bit of a design trick because when you get hit by a powerful card, it will stick in your memory and you will go into the next game knowing that that card might be there. So players, after the blackmail card gets used for the first time, players go into subsequent games knowing that card is in the deck and they'll adapt their, their play and that's actually one component of how the meta develops in the game. Uh, okay, yeah, so that's, sorry, I'm just gonna keep derailing things. Um, before we get into design stuff we're working on, Patrick, mm -hmm. Oath, we should say, is shipping. Uh, Oath is Oath is shipping right now to North America. Everyone else in the world should have it. If you don't, if you live somewhere not North America and you don't have it yet, contact support. Uh, don't contact us yet for North America. We're we're about half done. Yeah, it just takes a, it takes a really long time to ship this many games. They're shipping eleven thousand packages right now, and they're not Amazon, so this is going to take a while. Yeah, it just takes a while. Uh, yeah, so that's it's looking good. Uh, Root uh, number seven. Mm -hmm. Or root uh, root seventh printing is uh, leaving the factory. We, we think it has left the factory and just haven't communicated yet. Yeah, uh, and so that's so they're looking for uh, they're looking to ship it right now. Uh, thing is crazy. It's crazy to ship right now. Yeah. So and then uh, yeah, Oath will go to retailers. So the retailers that bought it with Kickstarter are getting it shipped to them right now. Mm -hmm. uh, the retailers who buy it like as a customer as one of our customers, it'll be a few months still yeah. before it goes to them. Yeah, and the actual official like broader distribution release date like for August. Oath is like August or even September. Yeah. So it'll be a bit. But if you got a pledge through your local retailer, it depends on what that meant, right? It could have meant that they backed it on the Kickstarter, in which case like maybe sometime within the next few weeks. But if, if they're just a regular retailer that didn't back it on Kickstarter, it could take a few more yeah, months. Yeah, then they're still. waiting. Yeah. Yeah. So. And there's another printing. Are we talking about the other printing? Shit. Kind of. Well, so well, I, well we, we can explain it, basically. Uh, the first printing was essentially divided over two production runs. The first part of the run is primarily fulfilling Kickstarter backers. Mm -hmm. And then the second run will have in hand for the actual wider retail Yeah, release. and there's quite a, there's actually quite a bit left. There was, yeah, yeah. was 12,000. Yeah, and you, then, you and then the like, second half Yeah, don't 30. stampede into a story. You'll, yeah, you'll yeah, get a copy. You'll get a copy, yeah. Um, okay. So we've talked about Oath, we talked about Root. Okay, we're, we're crossing it off. Uh, yeah. yeah. All these things are big projects that are taking a long time. I have an agenda. Time. You do. Yeah, just cross those things off. That's CEO. <laughs> <laughs> my, my agenda I wrote five minutes before we sat down. Uh, one uh, man, of, man of some note, uh, finding it nuts how I read, uh, review of Oath is like, well, I love it, but you might not. Um, one of the things as like a studio ethos we have is we try to make games that are someone's favorite game. So we don't want to make a game that like everybody kind of likes. We want a game right. that someone loves. They're obsessed with, and that means that you're going to get reviews like that. It's just it's just part of the territory. Yeah, and I think we're deep enough in the weeds, like artistically, that we're we're going to make something challenge, challenging for somebody. We're not making mm -hmm. we're not making Ghostbusters two. We're making uh, you know. I don't know, the English patient. We're not making the English patient either. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is a very weird, like, late 90s film. 
Patrick. I love it. My brain turned off in the 90s. <laughs> uh, but, you know, like, we're, uh, there we go. See, I mean, let's check everything off. Yeah, we're, uh, we're not, you know, we're not making it for a mass market. We're making it for a very specific audience. Yeah. And, uh, and, and we freely admit to that. And um, in some ways that limits us. In some ways it's very liberating. Right. We like can't, it like kind of stops us from making party games. Right. Because the goal of the party game is there are 10 people in a room with very different experiences and relationships to board games. And you need a game that's going to like kind of land enough with everyone in the room. And please do not play Oath as a party game. Yeah. Uh, your guests are going to really dislike you. Somebody kept, some other reviewer kept calling Vast our party game, and I was like, oh, well, yeah. oh no, no, it's my previous game, Severance. Uh, I think my wife would be delighted for making Orlando. I think. I love that movie. Yeah. I love that book. Everyone should go read Orlando, Leader Games Book Club. Uh, great, games, great album. Leader Games Book Club. To continue the 90s. Uh, there you go. <laughs> All right, well, let's talk about what's coming up then and mm -hmm. what we've been working on. Um, I put a line there, so I know that I've gone into notes and not agenda anymore. Yep. Uh, so you are working on uh, space game. Space game. The the game formerly known as Void Ledge. Yeah, the game we're like trying to figure out the right way to present it for what it's going to be, and it's still mm -hmm. trying to figure out what it is. Um, so yeah, the studio's in a funny spot. We're not we're not in a funny spot. We're just in the next spot, which is uh, we got a big project fulfilling. We got a big project that is in the final throes of. Pre press, mm -hmm. uh, but then of course we're working on stuff that's gonna you know be ready for the future, and I've been thinking about this space game, and the space game has a weird history. I can give the kind of like background to it, which is Patrick, Patrick was working on a space game for a long time, mm -hmm. and I had a weird like treatment of it as a kind of a different. It's a little bit of like a genre sidestep. Mm -hmm. I think it like still does a lot of what we want the game to do, but it is. In terms of, it's, it has a different mechanical framework or something. I can just put it in a dungeon if you miss what I was doing. <laughs> it's, it's fine. Just, I, I look at every, everything will be in a dungeon, yeah. Everything's in a dungeon. Yeah. Um, and so, like, I, I built a weird treatment of it last fall and then went off to Rootland. So, like, it, it was weird. I called it, like, the December cut, which is for about two or three weeks in November after we finished Oath. Because the last Oath pre-press like ended in October. Oath had a really long pre-press, um, and I and so like it, my, my decompression game was like game jamming on it. Mm -hmm. And then I recently like dusted it off and I'm working on it. And it's it's peculiar. It um the way I the way I've been thinking about it is, it is, uh, less complicated than Root. <laughs> Certainly, so is. it's like half a root faction or like mm -hmm. the cats. You know, it's like as complicated as the cats, mm -hmm. but the core system is strange enough that there's a lot of like interesting angles that even though it's simple, it has uh, just a lot of curious little corners to it. And the hope is to build a design that is simpler than Root, but interacts with both emergent asymmetric play and also with a kind of chronicle style system. Uh, and there are two rubs on that. So the, the, the first rub is the asymmetric play is totally emergent. So you start from positions of symmetry, but by the end of the sequence of games, you're sitting in kind of vast level asymmetry, or maybe like a degree or two down. Mm -hmm. And then the second component of the project is, whereas Oath has no beginning or end, has this kind of like very gradualistic approach to the way it tells big stories, um, the space game is a little more pulpy. It's a little more Star Wars-y and episodic. And the game is played in kind of these like three to four game sagas or two to four game sagas. Mm -hmm. um, and that puts different demands on the players. It means like, for instance, you need to have the same players from game to game, but also the saga reaches its conclusion, at, you know, at the end of the third game. Yeah. And, if you, and, you know, I mean, if you're through game two and your party changes, then just reset. Yeah, just, you, just reset. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. you could also like the game is shorter, too. I'm really aiming for like an hour game time. Right. So you could conceivably sit down and just play the full thing. Right. Full thing. Yeah. Just play in TTS and then you know clone new. Just, just kidding. Don't play in TTS. Um, the price range is, is an interesting question. I'm. I mean, it's obviously very early on. We don't really know where any of this stuff lands. I really want this to hit like the root shape and size in price and like box size and stuff like that. Um, A price point we're aiming for is roughly. Yeah, I, I don't know. Probably probably comparable to root. Yeah, yeah comparable to root. 
Yeah. Um, yeah, all the pieces will be gold, as Kyle says. And this, this is the thing that Kyle's been, been scribbling at. Uh, player counts, probably three to four, maybe two to four. Mm -hmm. No solo mode for this. I started thinking about it, and I was like, no, this is dumb. I'm not going to put a solo mode in this. Well, someone will make it anyway. Someone will, and then we can release it as an expansion. <laughs> <laughs> I just, solo takes me so long, and I would much rather design more of the, of the, of the design. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, probably not five player because of the way the action structure works. Um, it's a weird one. Oh yeah, I didn't think about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it like, I, you know, it's the kind of thing that like I'm sure it would work, but it'd be less interesting. And bunch of wilds. Also, like we haven't done a game. I haven't even asked for permission yet for this, but we haven't done a game that does a very narrow play count. That's true. That says three to four. I remember getting a kids game that's three player. Okay. Specifically. Maybe that's going to be the hot new thing. Yeah, or it, I guess two, but it's really it's really there for three, and, and not definitely not four. Mm -hmm. There's just no, there's just no, it's, there's just, it's, yeah. it's, it's asymmetric, it's asymmetric and there's rolls, and I was like, if it's going to be a kid's game, I don't want to throw in enough mechanics to have that fourth roll. Yeah, no, that, and I think, like, this is something I'm trying to be really mindful of. So all, I, I feel like whenever I'm working on a game, I think this is true for you, too, and true for maybe most designers, mm -hmm. I'm always reacting really directly to the game we just finished. You know. So, like, Oath was very much like a reaction to all the things that I wanted to change about Root, and this is a reaction to the things I wanted to change about Oath, So which is why it's, like, so simple. It's, like, very, it's just very stripped down, uh, a lot easier to teach. Uh, my goal is that, like, the game won't have a walkthrough, and instead, it will have a single piece of paper folded, like quick start rules, which you can read these illustrated quick start rules and just start playing. Because you need, it's in that class of game where like you can't play it unless you have full system knowledge, but right. the system is pretty straightforward. Um, I think we should do meeples. We're still figuring it out. It's quite early. I'm per miniature. Yeah. Because it scales. The CEO in me goes, it scales well. It does. So if Cole makes another banger and it sells sixty thousand. Yeah, then, then I don't have to make. Then I don't have, have to make a million meeples. <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. You ever like, thought about that? There are a million root meeples. It's horrifying, horrifying idea. Maybe, probably even ten million. Yeah. Maybe. If there's a hundred a set, yeah. Well, there's fifty a set. Two point five million. The, yeah. Oh, uh, so one point two five. Yep. Yep. There okay. There anyway, there's a lot of meeples out there in the world. Thanks to you all. Um, yeah, it, it just depends. It depends on like the look, and, um, and we're, we're, we're still kind of sussing that stuff out. Uh, the timeline for these projects, we actually have the timelines right here, but I'm not going to show them to you. Um, I mean, we do. Yeah, we can. We can wheel They're almost, yeah, the camera could fall down and you can see them. Yeah, you can see them. Uh, so, uh, so I'm going to do the math for me. 250,000 sets, 50 meeples. How many is that? I'm just missing a zero in my head. Uh, anyway. Yeah, so we're doing. There was. What do you mean, Vast Meeple Pack? I want a Vast Meeple Pack. Maybe for the original? Um, oh, you want to get it. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 12.5 million, yeah. says Josh. I trust Josh. He's good. Yeah, he's, good he's with good. them numbers. Yeah, that makes. That, I thought I was off. Um, um, yeah, so in terms of schedule, I'm noodling on this. I hope to have like a working proof of concept in a few weeks. Then, I'll, as Root finishes, this will become the main thing on my desk. I'll be pushing on over the summer, and then from there we'll just kind of see. Yeah, yeah. How we yeah. want to slot. Yeah, we haven't decided to order yet, um, and there's yeah. a lot of um, there's a lot of marketing and us decisions we need to make about. Yeah, that I would like. I think for some for this title, I would love for folks to have it by at some point next year. Mm -hmm. But that that can mean a lot of different things. Yeah, and there's also like strategy that we just hunker down and focus on oath and root, like printing wise, because. Like, creatively, we're fine. It's just printing right now is just a bear. So. It's, like, surprisingly hard to um, maintain product lines that are doing well. Yeah. I think that's something that when I first started, we, like, it, we just didn't, it, we didn't have the full picture, right? Because it was like, okay, we're going to do X title. We will then move on to Y title. Yeah. If you have to do reprints, you do reprints, but you don't, it doesn't mess with your current like creative pipe, but really has like twenty five SKUs. So right, and then, yeah. but as the SKUs get bigger yeah. and as the, the factories get, you know, like you, you're kind of using the same pipeline. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have we have to figure all that stuff out. Uh, uh, probably Kickstarter, but we'll we'll see. Yeah, for the space game. So Robert had asked about fan faction and, and just there asked again. I heard you just played Oath. Uh, um, Robert is the. Uh, uh, um, 
does this thing called um, Brutlin, which is, is, did I get that right? I think so. Yeah, where they play Root in Brooklyn. And uh, and so apparently he's 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 on to uh, oath. Um, yeah, we've really we've really talked about fan factions lately. It's like I think it's something that you and I both want to do, like a fan expansion at some yeah. point. But we have to figure out how Root's gonna like what Root's the shape of the land. end project yeah, is yeah. gonna be. Um, I was actually I was I was telling this to somebody recently because they asked me about the Root big box, and I was like, the thing about the big box for us is that it's gonna take like maybe a quarter of the work of developing a game to right. do it right. Right. And I don't want to put that on our desk while we're also developing a game. Mm-hmm. So we kind of have to do like a weird capstone mm-hmm. project to, to get if we if we end up doing a big box. And doing a fan faction project may be appropriate. If you need me to hire a contractor just to do boxes, I, I get like a letter every day in my email. <laughs> um, so we can, we can definitely have that covered. Not for anyone with game experience, but... Um, so yeah, I think I think for for factions that's going to be after the after uh, Cole's final expansion if we do it for fan factions, mm-hmm. um, and then and then we'll we'll talk about it. I, I, I kind of at that point I think we would just have to have a line editor purely for that work, and yeah. then while well, we focus on the um, the big IP stuff that's going on. So totally. yeah, so uh, Ahoy is uh, temporarily on the back burner. Yep. Probably, uh, and Nick is. Gonna pick it up this summer. Um, Nick's the primary developer or lead developer there, but Nick is pretty uh, heavily in Rootland. Um, but I think we'll just we're just gonna print it. We're not even gonna kickstart it. Yeah, so, we probably so, won't. So once he goes, it it's goes fast. And then that's one where there is still a question of how it looks from a product standpoint, mm-hmm. because we could kind of build it as like a thirty dollar game, a forty dollar game, or mm-hmm. a sixty dollar game, uh, and and it, it'll just it'll have different demands at different at different sizes. Um, and so, you know, I think the plan is after Nick finishes working on Root and we get all that stuff tied up, we'll probably put together a couple different product proposals and then start figuring out, like, what its real name is going to be, mm-hmm. what its setting is going to be. Are we going to keep it a pirate game? Oh, yeah, sure. Are people sick of pirates? We have to sort this stuff. Or will people not be sick of pirates? By I think, I mean, it's, it's hard. Pirates, more than any other thing, feels like it comes in a direct cycle yeah like there was like no pirates for a while and then forgotten waters came out and sleeping gods is like a little pirate here we stand it has pirates in it <laughs> sorry go ahead it does it was that was a very good joke patrick and it, i was stunned by your comedic brilliance um the gmt deep cut from patrick over there. um i have a proposal Okay. I'm going to go move the monitor over mm-hmm. about four inches to the left because the bar is right in the way. Oh, well then, yeah, you yeah. should do that. Okay. And I'm doing, I'm, I'm doing this. And while you, while you do that, I will answer the question about how I split my time between Leader Games and Whirly Gig. Has it been a challenge at any point? Sometimes I'm more tired than I should be. Um, but mostly I follow like a really dumb rule, which is at 9 o'clock a.m. Not 9 o'clock, really. It's usually about 8.30. Switch to Leader Games and it like 5.30, I switch away from leader games. And I just I just try to compartmentalize as best as I can. It, um, it's been a little harder this time because John Company is like uncomfortably lined up with Root Marauder. You also ran the Kickstarters almost at the same time. Yeah, it just, yeah. I, I, that will never happen again yeah. because I'm a little tired. But Drew actually, Drew actually makes it work because he, he's brilliant. And I don't have to worry about it. Like Drew... He, he will send me a bunch of messages that I will check in the evening, and I'm sure there's nothing burning. To go back to Robert, real quick, I have played a few versions of Fangus lately, and that's been fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I like the last couple of months. So, different, pe- different uh, people's different spins on Fangus. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I've been playing them. I've been playing uh, with Lord of the Board. I've been playing it uh, sometimes on Friday nights. Fangus has been around a long It's like one of the oldest fan factions. It is. So, yeah, I feel like not version. only does it exist, it has like. Subversions, which is cool, and the new uh, and the new. Um, we aren't we aren't talking about root yet. On TTS, we can't. Talk about I don't think we can quite talk about. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. We're not there. We have something cool, root related to show people later. Later. Ooh, speaking of root stuff, one more root thing. Um, the RPG is almost done, which is very exciting. It is. Yeah, it we're... is like mostly done. Uh, I think there's just the expansion, the second book. They're finishing up right now, and I read I read through it last week, 
uh-huh. just doing like final galley, not galley proofs, but like a pre-press proof. It, it's really cool. Cool. I cannot wait. We played it like years ago at this mm-hmm. point. So it's just I am so thrilled that a bunch of people like I. The thing I was talking about this with Mark. Um, it, I think it will be a lot of people's second RPGs. Mm-hmm. They will have like played D and D maybe. Yeah. And they played the root RPG, yeah. and to have it be in a system that is not anything like 5e is yeah. really cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm, re- I'm really happy with how it's turned out. Yeah. Patrick, Patrick did all that. He did a good uh, job. I, did. I, I uh, picked out of a hat. Patrick, talk about your games. Well, first, before we go to that, mm-hmm. would you do an Oath video game? What do you mean like a digital if, adaptation? If someone came to you and said, I want to do the Oath digital adaptation, would you participate in that project? I would love, I would, I would love, I think Oath would be a great digital now, what if someone came to you and said, I want to do a multi-generational RPG? Into it, 100%. I want to help. <laughs> awesome. Okay. I like, no, I, I, so if you're out there. <laughs> oh, no. I've been, I got baited. I just want to work on the space game. I mean, this is, I think, one of the, like, I, the, the prospect, you know, we're not talking seriously about it, but the prospect came up of, like, maybe we should do more content for Oath. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I just escaped. Right, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I need to... I need to get get on the next the next project. I think the digital adaption will be hard because well, obviously there's negotiation at the table. Yeah, so that's going to be harder. But then I think just some of the cards are just like some of the cards make are, a deal. All right. I mean, basically, you have to make like two hundred little sub. Right. It's just it's such a time intensive project. Any studio that wants to do the digital version of both, I want to like run a sanity check. Be like, are right. you sure that you want to do this thing? Because it's going to take a ton of work. I just escaped. Um, yeah, future timeline of Root Digital. I, I mean, we know, but we can't talk about it. Uh, they're they're working on stuff. They have the rights to work on everything. There's, they're not holding anything yeah. back because they're doing a good job. They know it's going to sell. Yeah. yeah, they're just they're just uh, um, they're just they're just taking their time. They're doing what video game companies do and protect, protecting themselves. So yeah, I get it. Uh, yeah, so. You got a bunch of stuff in the cooker. I have a bunch of stuff in the cooker. Yeah, I'm 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 all over the place right now. Some of it is actually Patrick's notes are propped on top of a bunch of RPG books, which yeah. are flattening cards for one of his projects. Yeah, so yeah. like they're his projects are seeping in every, every <laughs> just off can, any like this frame that surrounds us. Assume Patrick's projects are like right. Yeah. There, there are literally tiles drying in front of us right now. Uh, and I have DVD books stacked on. Uh yeah, so I've been working on Havoc. And Havoc is my, like, I guess, dungeon brawler. But it's, yeah. not, it's not in a dungeon. I like, I describe it as a brawler. Yeah, brawler, yeah. Uh, but it is kind of dungeon-y. But, yeah. But there are no, there's no ceiling. There's no ceiling in, in the Shadowlands um, that you know of. Uh, yeah, and so I've been, I like, during during the lockdown and back in December, I just reminded, saw the full history today. Kyle, like, on a Saturday afternoon was like, hey, want to talk? Mm-hmm. And then he sat us down and talked to us. Um, well, that is extremely uncharacteristic for Kyle. Kyle will very rarely send messages after work hours. He's a... Let yeah, alone a proposal. Let alone a project. <laughs> <laughs> so he sent me this proposal, and he um, and we sent us. We sat down and talked to him on a Saturday afternoon, and I was like... Brandy, I, I, have, I know we're packing the house to move, but I have to go talk to Kyle. Sure. And, uh, and so I went and talked to Kyle, and he had this pitch for... We'd been talking about how... Kind of the life cycle of Vast and what we would do with it next if we were to do anything. And I think this kind of bore, bore out of it. Like, a way to make it easier to contain and easier to expand and easier to, um, like, set up. Um, so that tells, us, tells a similar story to Vast... Um, but it's not, not quite the same. And so, yeah, and so I've been working on this game where there's these... I don't think it's symmetric. I mean, there's... there's two, you still play the setting, which feels asymmetric. Mm-hmm. But everyone else is a... Is a cre- no, they feel different. Creature. It's, mo- it's more of a traditional asymmetry. Yeah. Like, I, But I think it's more than variable player powers. Yeah. Then that's what I was aiming for. It was somewhere between the two. Especially yeah. if, when I started with Void Lich 2, I was said, I want something between variable player power and uh, asymmetric. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, yeah, and so right now it is a uh, barbarian fighting a warlock who can summon, has summons, um, so he's weak, but he's got helpers, and then um, uh, they're fighting a demon ape in this broken landscape, and mm-hmm. um, and someone can play the landscape still, so 
that's in there. And I recently just moved it from like it being you roll dice at the beginning of the turn to generate your actions to now you just play cards. Um, and I can't test it anymore because you can't know what's on your opponent's card until you see it. Mm-hmm. And so now, now, uh, so now we're building the physical set for the first time because I, I did all that work. In He's PDS. gesturing right here yeah. to the physical set. To the physical set is, that's being built. Right there. Yeah, and um, and so and I got some help with it, and so that person is building the um, is building the set right now for me, and uh, and we learned about best practices this morning. Yeah, mm-hmm. I uh, I was storing all the art inside of il- the Illustrator file, and when I opened it today, all the graphics inside Illustrator were corrupt. Uh, I've never seen that happen. I really, I think it is something to do with my laptop because I, I feel like there's been times I've opened it on my desktop at home and it's fine, and then I go look at it on my laptop and it's plenty broken, and then I go back to my desktop and it's fine. Mm. Anyway, so I rebuilt it all with links the way you're supposed to build it, and uh, we're, I'm working my way through that right now. So, so we're building a physical prototype. You can play it with me anytime on uh, on TTS because I have it set up. Mm-hmm. I, said, I just. I kind of want a reality check with the card system before I went and played it publicly again. So, so I'm waiting for that. No, I know we're. In a, I think like the ability to prototype physically is something that we're all getting used to. I was just talking yeah. about it with Nick because he is Nick is building a high fidelity prototype for all the Marauder stuff, so you can make uh-huh. sure everything fits in yeah. the boxes properly. Yeah. And he was like, I haven't had to build a physical prototype in months. Well, these are these surprise me. This two inch tile. Oh yeah, so I, that's I, not I big would, enough. No, yeah, I kind of, I was like, she built them, and I was like, uh, so maybe. I think three? Maybe it has to be. Three. See, know. we already learned something. I yeah, built the prototype, yeah. yeah. Uh, so. With, 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 with the space game, I've never built it digitally. Uh-huh. I've only kept it physical, because I just, I want to be really um, conscious of physical spaces. Also, the game just wouldn't work in TTS very well, unfortunately. Which game? I don't think the space game would. Oh, no, no, no. I think, or I think it's, it would take a little bit of custom scripting to make it. I don't want to do it right now. Uh, so I've also been working on yes Castle Blood, and working as, a lot on Castle Blood. As soon as it was the weirdest thing, as soon as I had built your because basically the havoc changes I'm working on right now are from suggestions you and Kyle made. Last we played, as soon as I was done with them, like my brain exploded and Castle Blood started coming back out of it, mm-hmm. and out of the out of the hole in my head. And it, was, <laughs> it was horrifying. Uh, and uh, I went back to work on it, and um, I just was like, I like I had all these steps. I've been having you know some anxiety issues because 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 of, of this year at home, and um, and I finally I just made a list of like this is what you need to do to finish it, and then I was just like, only look at this line, finish that part, and then you know, so it wasn't it wasn't this overwhelming yeah, list, yeah, totally. you know, and I and I got through I got through Castle of Blood and I played three games one night on TTS uh, with the Woodland Warriors, back to back. We just because it was we were playing a camp, we played a short campaign, and um, it, it worked phenomenally. I really enjoyed it. And then and then you and I talked about it, and we've been talking. I have an ongoing conversation mm-hmm. about the reward structure in a campaign in a co op game. Yeah. Specifically, and um, and like, what what do people want? Do they want to be punished for failing, or do they want to bounce back after failing? Mm-hmm. And do they want to be punished for winning? And and a lot of conversations about that. And and so I've been, I've been working on that. I've been building a system for generating the quests in the game or the dungeon crawls in the game, so that it doesn't they're new and fresh, but they don't feel ridiculously procedural. And how to fit those, how to, mm-hmm. how to live with those two. Because yeah. some people like really want a very procedural game; they don't mind it. Uh, you play Caves of Cud. That's, yeah. that's extremely procedural. Um, but some people like Zombicide and right. with their with their published quests. So, um, so that's been a interesting task. So, I, I don't know. We're kind of inching towards putting it into production. It's yeah. closer than it was. It's closer than it was. It, so, um, also, I just want to highlight Josh's suggestion: Castle Buds. I thought you were going to do a spit take, but instead we get the... <laughs> no, Pat is looking this way, by the way. He's looking at the, yeah, I'm looking at the monitor. He's looking yeah. at the monitor. Um, so we're, we're, the studio is, is, works in a kind of interesting way right now where we can kind of be working on like three groups or maybe three or four projects uh, internally. And then we also, so we have like our internal development, we're like tr- packing these fireworks, right? Or whatever. I don't know. I don't know what governing metaphor to use. Um, so we work on those things. 
uh, it's a, it takes one person a lot of time to get something presentable. And then, on the other hand, we have this big infrastructure for actually turning these early projects into finished games. And the next time one of those like pipelines opens up will be like in a month or two. Mm -hmm. And so there's like we have a little bit of a soft question of like, what's the next one that we direct towards that mm -hmm. big pipeline? And if we wanna like maybe wait six months, there are good reasons to do that too, because that big pipeline can do things like work on language editions, yeah. help manage marketing, get ready for us to start going back to shows again. Growth. Uh, growth, you yeah. know, like training folks. Um, so like that, you know, we have like lots of little small capacities that to, to, to get projects ready. But then we also have this like very big like bulldozer that we, that we can use. But the bulldozer can be used for other things. It doesn't have to make games and that, you know, for instance, again, I'm all over the place with my, with my mixed metaphors today. Um, it, like, you know, so an interesting example here is something like language editions of Oath. Mm -hmm. So Oath is a complicated production and it has lots of words. But there are people who want to make language editions of it. Mm -hmm. And we want to make language editions of it. But just getting the Oath files ready for languages is like a month of a person's time. It's like a, it's a huge job yeah, to get yeah. that ready. And so we have to make, make decisions about, you know, how, how we're gonna do things. And right now our current rough strategy is that after we finish Marauder, you know, everybody who, who works on that big pipeline is gonna kind of break up and do smaller projects like getting Oath ready. And then in a few months we'll reconvene and reassemble it and then start directing it towards right. a big project. But who knows, we'll, we have to just kind of see how the year goes. And all this on top of I've been shopping for a building. Yeah, we're like, well, we have to figure out if we need to move or if we are not moving, we kind of have to redivide our space. Because this office is like perfect, but it's it's the velvet rut. It's mm -hmm. like very comfortable, mm -hmm. but you cannot grow or expand right. in the present environment. Well, um, as long as our neighbors are here. Yeah. So if anybody needs to haunt a building, haunt this one until they leave. Until they leave. Perfect. We'll just hire some, we'll, we'll hire some haunts. It's this easy. Can we do alternative. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so yeah, so that's uh, that's what we're going. So here's my pitch for Castle Blood today. Okay, new Ooh, material today. Okay. You ready? Is, you're gonna get a live take. Uh, okay, so two concepts. Mm -hmm. One, so there's this concept in the game that if you get killed too many times, when you get killed in the game, you just wake up because mm -hmm. you're because you're dreaming or whatever. You're in the world is Castle Blood and you come back. Yeah. Uh, so if you die too many times, one of the monsters finds your dream version mm -hmm. of you. And turns you into one of the monsters. Okay, so you become a monster. You become a monster. And so this is part of the rubber banding because you suddenly come back as a more powerful character. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, so now you're an armor blade and now you have a lot of armor in addition to. But you're fighting the other players? No, you're, 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 you're in the party still. Okay. And, uh, and so, and the armor blade can only appear in the campaign because you need that miniature. Um, and so. I've been. My, that's not my pitch, that's already in the game. Okay. My pitch is. That we make those player boards with a like a more asymmetric role than the other characters. Oh, okay. That's my pitch. Because right now they're a little different. They have a, yeah, yeah. So if you, if you die a bunch of times, it gives you like a different game to play. Yes. You were really bad at the first game. No. Here's, Maybe here's you'll be better at the second. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I like that. I, yeah. It's cool. It also like weirdly rewards players for dying in a way that you want to give them something. Well, your can't your ending is going to be terrible at that point. Sure, yeah, sure, sure. yeah. But but you're like accessing new content. Yeah, you know, in kind of interesting way. And you cannot you there is an option at the end of the campaign to retire one character through to the next campaign, mm -hmm. and you the monster character is automatically disqualified from that mm -hmm. that consideration. So okay, that's pitch number one. Okay, I pitch, like it. Pitch number two is to take the scoring system from Ublia. Mm-hmm. Which is the other dungeon? The other dungeon brawler is working in the summer, last summer. Patrick's a man of many dungeons. I love, I love me some dungeons. I'm even working on dungeon. My my take on it in 2020. Um, oh, like your take on TSR's? Yeah, dungeon? Just, just walk in a room, kill a monster. Walk in the next room, kill a monster. Yep. Uh, so I wish uh, that game were better. I see. That's that. There was a marketing question you just asked me. Right. Could, could I wish dungeon were better. better. Yeah. So. TSR, you've had like 40 years. Or Hasbro, whoever, whoever owns Dungeon right now. Do you know that guy's local? 
for the no. New York Dungeon. I'm sorry I, I made fun of you. But right. I love he's, <laughs> he's, coming, he's coming for you. Uh, his, uh, his daughter's actually a, 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 in IGDA and is a game programmer. Um, so, uh, so I take the material from Ulia and I make a mode for Castle Blood where the, the players are the monsters. Okay. And there is just a there is just a PvP game that is essentially what Uliet would have been, using the same mechanics. Mm. With that scoring system. You're getting into like the gambling space of like there's any way to play this game. Which I find myself personally moving away from uh-huh. because I'm like I'm not doing solo for space game. Uh-huh. But I think it kind of makes sense. I think I think like if, it would get, if once the campaign's over, because you yeah, like you, know, you can take a break during the campaign know. and beat each other up, yeah. Yeah, so. especially you know you just want to explore the combat. You can spar a little. And the and the elements of the scoring system will be in there because like if you think about like you know in Team Fortress there's that mode where you had to like go grab the you touch the flags and they become your color and then it wasn't or Splatoon. It's the amount of time you control yeah. it that's important, not not the control. And so that's. Yeah, yeah, that might make an appearance in the co-op game anyway because the monsters are. Could you make a version where there's like a little cart and a train that you have to move? That's oh my, yeah, that's yeah. my favorite Team Fortress. So you got to move the payload through. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Love, yeah. love the pay- I love the double payload mode. Is my favorite mode. You know, my favorite map. Like I talk about it with old timers, and they're like, "I don't know what you're talking about." There's this one where it's like an Italian villa, mm-hmm. and, and you have to, like one team is just trying to breach the defense and get yes. to the top of it, and like every time they get to a certain point that. The rest of the map is basically gone. Like they respawn mm-hmm. past that point, and you have fifteen minutes or ten minutes to do it. And every time I talk about it, people are like, "I, I, I have no idea I'm, what you're talking about." Is this Team Fortress One? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, that was that was Team Fortress One. You should scoot over, Patrick. Okay, I will. Uh, see, that guy played it. I also like Canal Zone a lot. Canal Zone One and Two were my favorite Team Fortress mm-hmm. maps, which is the one where you have to touch points, yeah. and then you get you get points for that. Yeah, I was I was a Counter Strike player. I hang out with the Team Fortress players sometimes, like right now. Oh my god! Proudest gaming moment was when I knifed two snipers after disguising myself as a sniper. I snuck <laughs> up into there. They just totally pinned down for like five minutes, and then I went and knifed both of them. And then they kept trying to take their gantry back, and they and they had to go up the ladder to do yeah. it. And I just like, oh, yep, yep, yeah, this is this is my my spot now. Uh, right. They are the same. Slug Monster, the space game and Voyage are the kind of. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah and there's like, right now there's this open question about how much of the Voyage world will belong in the space game if we need to break products. Some of that stuff is still sorting out, but they're kind of the same product. Yeah. Um, do, 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 do. Okay, uh, questions. We should take some questions. Oh, yeah, we, we should. We have like we... 10 minutes or so. You can't get the green shirt, shirt unless you're a playtester. Thank you, Jimbo the Hobo. Um, I don't know if we're going to keep doing playlists or shirts. We have to figure it out. This is an experiment. Um, it's hard because, like, the reason why we, we did the playtester shirts is because we found that a lot of our playtesters are backers and they want to back the game. And so we don't want to, like, send them an extra copy mm-hmm. uh, because it should be special. <laughs> it should be something, you know, I don't know, it should be something special. So the custom small print run shirts are our way of doing it. We're going to have to go five minutes over because someone just asked if we played Ghost Ghost Shadow. Okay. <laughs> so much. I almost failed high school. <clears throat> I like playing uh, the, the last, like, phase. I go through phases with Cosmic where I'll play it a lot over, mm-hmm. you know, a month or two. My, my favorite way of playing it, I don't know if it has a name, is where you you have two aliens and you start with them face down and you only reveal them when you, when you them. first use the play, sure. the, the power. I love that way of playing a game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I've played it a lot. I've played, uh, I've probably left high school having played 500 games. Oh my games. goodness. Yeah. I, so the very first Cosmic Encounter set that I, I will date myself, that I ever owned was the weird late 90s Avalon Hill set mm-hmm. with the funky little like yep. pyramid ships. Um, there was a full set of Convergence for sale. Oh, Avalon. No, no, no the, there, yeah, there yeah, was the Eon Avalon. edition. I, so the yeah. Avalon Hill, which had like the, the funny ships you could like load the little pods into. And um, I think it's the worst version of Cosmic Encounter because it comes with like eight aliens Mm -hmm. and not even the more interesting ones. So I had played Cosmic Encounter and just didn't get, you'd you'd read internet forums of people talking about how wonderful it was. And you're like, what? I was like, I I don't know, there's like 10 aliens. It doesn't seem that cool. And then when the Fantasy Flight version came out when I was in college, that kind of... That edition's very good. 
It's I, super good. Yeah, I really it, like it. I think yeah. at, like I think if Fantasy Flight, you know, if that if their legacy is that they were excellent custodians of Cosmic Encounter for 15 years, like what a legacy as a company. But if they want to sell it to me, they can. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Would you do that? Yeah, I mean, just if, we, if, we, if we could be the custodians of Cosmic Encounter. <laughs> That'd be amazing. I really want to play the most recent expansion, the one that has the original designers. It's supposed to be very wacky. It is amazing. I have it. I'll bring it in. We've yeah, we've just played games with just it. Oh, that's, that's perfect. Yeah, and it's it's pretty funny. Yeah, I really like it. Uh, yeah, I have the I have the Mayfair edition, and uh, I have played yes, the Mayfair Kyle. edition a lot. Uh-uh. Kyle, yeah, yeah, Kyle that's true. Wants to draw the heck out of Cosmic Encounter. Oh. Yeah, I, 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 it is. It's a good place for me to start designing where I come up with a very basic system of rules, and then mm-hmm. figure out how what are the exceptions to the system. And Cosmic delivered that premise better, but more in focus than what we try and do. And, it's super. Uh, it's it's but it's a good game. game. Yeah, beautiful game. Uh, okay. Any more questions? Yeah, any questions? Hit us with your questions, and then we're I want to go till five after. I don't want to go back to work. It's hard. Working? In, in, in the <laughs> office again. Yeah, it's... it's I, like, l- Friday afternoon, I was like, oh, my God. I And then, like, you know, my kids are at home, and my... And Brandy's not very social, but, like, I was like, I don't want to talk to any of you fine people. I just want to go be mopey. So... Yeah, we would have, like, days, I feel like, right, right when we start getting back to the office, where I'd come home and be like, hey, I'm just going to read. I'll, like, watch the kids, but then I'm... Yeah, the Kyle's Arts for the for it, we're exploring uh, void literature or space game right now. Uh, good combat and area control games. Uh, a good combat for me is combat that is tuned to what the game actually needs, right? Uh, which sounds like a really low bar, but man, you'd be surprised. Sometimes folks get a cool idea for how combat should play, and then the whole the whole game gets all screwed up on it. And I'll, I'll give you like even a classic example. So, Mark Herman made this game called We the People, this old game about the American Revolution, which had kind of a cool combat system of like you're playing cards, and it feels like a little bit like a big battle. But the combat system, which was interesting by itself, um, just took too long and wasn't really like well appointed to what the rest of the game was doing. And when he republished it as Washington's War, he rebuilt the combat and it's very smooth and fast now. Um, and so I, I think good combat for me is combat that is dialed in to what the game needs. I love like, I love Innis's combat, but like Innis's com- combat would be horrible in Root or horrible in like Kemet, right? So, you know, it, it's, it's, what, it's what the engine demands. So Drew asked if we're working on anything with trick taking in it, which I think, <gasps> yeah. The space game is kind of trick taking. Yeah, but, but, but yeah. I, I, I almost like don't. It's a weird thing to say. Yeah. Because I don't want people to think this is trick of the rails. Or, no, no, no. Or tricky no. tie. Like no, no. It's like a space game. There's board. You move pieces around. But the action system takes its beats from card games it's very cool it's very cool i don't know if it's gonna make it but it's i don't know cool. if it's gonna make it either yeah. but it like i uh, <laughs> even the, i was like mm. <laughs> this is a design phase that i go through where i design uh, a fun weird action system that i then have to throw out like oath had this crazy rondell action wheel system that i really liked it was really interesting and it just didn't work so currently void lich has a really weird action system that is a little trick-taking hmm. uh who knows if it'll make Somebody asked me if we'd be considered doing a solo or PVE game. The Castle Blood is a yeah. the solo or PVE game. Yeah, it's a. Uh, I I am paying very close attention to making it work for one to five players, and every player count will feel the same challenge, um, no matter what you do to the player mm-hmm. count. One might be a little tricky just because you might have to be in a lot of places at once, but it's still it's still gonna work. And I, 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 I'm not a big fan of games where it's like, here are the five skeleton cards based on how many, you know, like which player can't use the right skeleton card. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I'm, I'm done everything in my power to avoid that. Now, some of the boss characters did have to be tuned for the number of players in the challenge level of the game. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was just like, you know, after painting myself into so many corners, I was like, okay, I just got to, like, there's just got to be a chart at, at the end of this hall. Uh, but all the all the scenarios and all the board layouts are designed so that if, if you play it solo, it'll work. If you play a five player, it'll work. Mm-hmm. Player count scaling is hard. It's hard, and it's been it's frankly it's why I started designing it. One of the reasons I started designing it was because 
Like, if you look at Mice and Mystics, perfectly fine dungeon crawler. I love that game. Uh, their player scaling is you just have to play four characters. Right. And yeah, 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 yeah. It's not really, it's not really scaling. Yeah, it's not really scaling. Yeah, and then, if you, the scale. and then if you look at, this, like, Descent, again, perfectly fine uh, game. Um, I just felt like when you're playing alone, sometimes it was really punishing. Totally, hundred percent agree. Yep. Uh, real time games, I don't know, maybe it's for me at least. What one, so real time games are in a funny spot. It's like I love Captain Sonar, mm-hmm. love Captain Sonar, but I love it so much that I don't really want to work on a game like Captain Sonar because sure. Captain yeah. Sonar exists and is wonderful. It's like the same reason why I don't want to make a train game. I love train games, but they're already really good. Brooke just sent me a message. Should I have not said that, Brooke? Ooh. Uh, someone asked about the Ford expansion. Here's what I'll say about the Ford expansion. You will learn more about the Ford expansion at the end of the month. It's done. Yeah. It's like coming to us. It's like on a boat or a train or something. And so many details. By the time we have our next designer chat, there's going to be a lot of Ford expansion chat around. There'll be, yeah. There's one in my house, but don't go to my house. It's, it is, I said this last stream, it's awesome. It's, it's one of my favorite... Out of all the expansions that the studio has done, I think the Ford expansion ranks very highly. It it takes the game to a whole other level. Are you ready for Brooke's question? Mm-hmm. It was from the chat. How do you feel about a two-player variant for Oath with removing a site from each region? It works super good. And a favor from each bank. It works super good. This variant, I think, was originated by a person named Matthew on the Oath testing Discord. And they tested it a bit, and we would have probably put it in the rules if we had space. If we had time to test it. Yeah, next time right. It was like a page count testing, like, space problem, but I, I played it once. It was really cool. Can I take these last two? Yeah, fire these are away. These are awesome. Uh, asymmetric co-op train game. We have not... That's not a thing I can do. I don't know enough about train games. Uh, oh, you could totally make an asymmetric... You but I do, have a, I do have an asymmetric economic game from before I started working on Vast mm-hmm. uh, that we've talked about brushing off a couple times. Yeah. Uh, I need a theme for it. I keep like, it's like, deep space, you're on a new planet, and then I'm like, no, I just want a town in America, and then sometimes I'm like, it yeah. could be root characters. Yeah. Um, it's just something I've been doodling, and um, basically everybody plays a sector of the economy in that area, and, and then shares a little bit with the other players. And so you have to kind of con- you have to kind of build around that, and, and and there's you know there's trading, it's working together. Uh, and I and it was my reaction. Frankly, it was like I was playing Puerto Rico a long time ago, and I didn't like how everybody started the same and then diverged. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, that's fine. That's interesting. It's fine, right? But but it's not how real economies work. And so I kind of I was like exploring, and then it even has this concept that more companies are introduced during the game, and then. Um, and then that's why I keep asking on Twitter and Cole, like, how does stock trading work in board games? Because I haven't played enough stock games mm-hmm. to really get a handle for it. And so I was like, I wanted the ownership of new resources to be split between the players. Uh, so that was a thing. And then what was the question right after? Can you scroll so a little bit? Tabletop scrimmage Tabletop games. Tabletop scrimmage games. Question mark? Question mark. Because I have been playing Warcry and mm-hmm. um, Monpok again. Uh, or I haven't been playing Monpok. I went and looked at all my models and thought, I should play this again. Um, Wait, what is Mon- Monster Apocalypse? Monster Apocalypse. Okay. The, the people for, know call for it the Mon- stream. <laughs> Mon- that's Monster Apocalypse. Because <laughs> uh, it came out because the original edition of it was this collectible miniature game, and now it's uh, now they're just traditional miniatures that you paint. Mm-hmm. Um, and I kind of thought I would get into painting them because I'm like the robots would be easier to paint than than my little dudes. Uh, so I have, I've actually been wrestling with making Castle Blood and kind of in the vein of Rangers of. Shadow Deep, something of it, maybe. Right, which is a Shadow Fall, uh, where it's it's a miniature war game where the players are working together against automated opponents, um, like within the same rule, like just Castle Blood with just that instead of having moving spaces, it just has miniature movement. So, but mm-hmm. I decided not to because bleh. I I would love to do a skirmish game like when I retire. It's it's a weird market though. Yeah, right? I mean that's like it's one of those. It's things. a new market. It's a different market. Well. There's a funny question that we sometimes think about, which is, like, would you, as the person making the thing, are you in the target audience? Right. And, you know, ideally, the answer is always yes. But that's not always true, right? right? Like, sometimes, like, so I, 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 I was thinking about this when it came to, like, Root Marauder, where I was like, wow, I don't, there are very few board games I own mm-hmm. 
that have as many expansions as now will have existed for Root. Right. Um, am I still even in the target audience for Root? And, I, and w- w- where I've landed with it is like, yes, I, I think I've still got a couple more Command and Colors expansions w- to go. W- would Cole buy Root? But, uh, at yeah, this it's point? Just, it's yeah. Just, we're so deep into it. Um, you know, who knows? But but so there's a question about like miniature st- skirmish games. I think are really hard because the audience is so different from a board gaming audience. It is, yeah. And, like, I didn't really get this until them. when you started telling me you've been watching these streams. And so I was like, I'm going to spend some time on Warhammer Twitch. I was yeah, just curious. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, this is a different, very different beats, very different very different type of audience. Did, um, so you've been watching YouTube? Like, like the no, people, no, just, uh, like, random, like, paint streams. Oh, people, sure. People playing on Twitch and things like oh, that. Oh, that's cool, yeah. I've um, been watching Gorilla Miniature Gaming because yeah, he plays something every day, which blows my mind. He has... He, he has Ten different shows, because he's in a two-week rotation. I like, like Garrick. If you're on the stream watching, I don't know how you stream every night. It's crazy to me. He, he like plays root and stuff, but like every night, boom, boom, boom. It's amazing. Uh, he, uh, I mean, GMG is that's his job. He does it professionally, so that helps. All right. Uh, anything else? It's we're running over. I think we're running a little over. All right. Well, if there are no final questions. Um, Looking forward to various things. So uh, we talked about a bunch of new titles. None of them are like really going to testing, but they will eventually. Um, we are mostly as a studio, like, you know, I, I hate to spoil it, but our next designer stream is going to be kind of like this one because I, we will have just finished Root. Yeah. Um, so we, you know, we, we, all, all the stuff that is that is operating right now is going to take a few weeks to come to fruition. Like I'm going to go sit down with the bots today and tomorrow and, and things like that. Uh, but uh, as always, we thank you guys for all of your support. It's lovely to have uh, such a crew w- with us on these things. Ford expansion will fit in the box. The Ford expansion will fit in the box. Boy, howdy. It'll fit in the box sleeve. It, will, it won't fit in its own box sleeve because it comes in a little tuck box. Yeah. Uh, but it will fit in the, the actual Ford. The actual and it's one of those expansions that once you shuffle it into the deck, you'll never unshuffle it. It's, it's aces. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, I think that's it for us. Uh, you can follow Patrick at Patrick at Leader, me at Cole Worley, Leader Games at Leader Games. Um, we do things on Twitch sometime. Cole posts infrequently. I post infrequently. I post when I feel like I'm, I'm feeling guilty about not posting. And mm-hmm. I'm like, I should say something to someone. <laughs> and you can see me throwing... Uh, throw throw burrito, inflatable throw throw burritos onto the roof. Patrick of my is house. a much more fun follower. Uh, on Saturday or Sunday afternoon, the or spiciest Monday yeah, afternoon. The spiciest take you're going to get from me on Twitter is like, <laughs> I found a funny picture in a book, and and Patrick has a much has a much better Twitter persona. It was fun, uh, and then leader games, of course. You know, if you want to find out some information, yeah. and, you know, uh, last I should mention, uh, if you are like interested in testing the games or you just want players, uh, check out the Woodland Warriors Discord. Uh, it's amazing, and uh, tons of Oath games are happening these days. Lots of re- lots of everything. And just if you're interested in playing any of our games, if you've got a copy of Vast and Mysterious Manor sitting on the shelf, and you're like, boy, I always wanted to learn how to play that game or play it, go to the Woodland Warriors. Get in a game with some folks. You can play it. Um. Yeah, Kyle, Kyle, Kyle's got it. Kyle's got it. Thank, thank you, Brooke, for posting the, the link to the Discord. Uh, okay, well, that's it for us. I hope you all have a lovely day. Yeah, and we'll talk to you later. See ya.